So, once you have line work that is a vector, whether you live trace it like this, or whether you use the blob brush like this and digitally ink it in Illustrator, or whether you do a combination of both like this, Ooh, you keep adding. Remember, this is not logo design, this is illustration. So you can have kind of too much going on if you like, or it could be minimal or it can be geometric. It's totally up to you. But this project is not a black and white project, though often professional projects are. So if this was for what's called a one color shirt, this is the end of the process, getting the black and white or getting just the black film work, right? But this as a t-shirt would be kind of boring because it doesn't have a whole lot of filled in space. So what do we do next? Once we're happy with our line work, we save it in Illustrator by saying file save as an AI file. This is our working file because we might come back and add to the line art if we want to. So mine's called Carl Assignment 7, <laughs> Vitor Live Trace. I left out the C. Now you need to save it to bring it into Photoshop so that I can show you coloring. So you say save as, once you're happy with your line art, fairly happy with it. And I'm going to save it to the desktop as an EPS file, just like we do with our logos before we made them print ready. Now this does not mean that you have to be all finished with your line art, right? Because I can go back and keep playing with this. But before I can add color behind it, I want it to be solidified as just black line art as an EPS file. So I have that. If I open that up in preview, it is a vector, so I can zoom in in a program that's other than Illustrator and see that it's perfectly smooth no matter how much I zoom in. So we know it's a vector. Now let me close Illustrator or just minimize it for a bit. Before we get into coloring it in Photoshop, let me show you some examples. Digital coloring is just like if you inked this on a piece of paper and then wanted to color it. Digital coloring goes behind your black line work, right? But if you ink in your sketchbook and you color it with colored pencil, your Sharpie still comes through. So this is just with Sharpie and watercolor. The most basic type of coloring is called flat coloring. Flat coloring is where you take the local color of a thing. <laughs> so this guy has kind of a yellowish skin tone. That is one color. And so that's the local color. Doesn't matter how he's lit. That's like the local color of his skin. It's like the yellow of Charlie Brown's shirt. And then you just fill in everything that is that local color. Same thing with his brown hair. He has this kind of ash brown hair. That's just all filled in. Notice that flat color changes dramatically based on the inking on top of it. So sometimes when you have a lot of shading in your inking and in your illustration, it's better to have simple coloring because flat color can look pretty good underneath really complex inking. But when it's under just very simple line art, Sometimes it can look a little plain. So what's the next step of coloring? This is if you want it. The next step is to add a light and a dark value to each local color. So you take the yellowish skin tone in this case and you make a dark version of it and a light version of it. This is separate from the line art, right? So now you have a shadow value to that skin and a light value to that skin. And that's called duotone coloring. Same thing with the hair a light value to the hair, a dark value to the hair. That's called duotone. And then the most extreme digital coloring you can do is what's called continuous tone or full spectrum. Full spectrum color means that yes, he has yellowish skin, 
But in color theory, that would mean that in the right light conditions, he would have purple in his shadows. So this has not just yellows and dark yellow and, and light yellow, but it has purples and oranges in its shadows. And the hair has blues and purples in it. So it's like kind of just opening up the full spectrum to you. Gets really further away from the local color. I have a handout that in your Canvas course that you can download to see this. But let's see how that process works. So this is not my example, but this is readily available in a tutorial online. So that is what's called flat color. Just flat local color behind the vector line arc. And the only thing that doesn't really ring true is the blue in the eye, right? But it, it reminds you that even white in digital coloring has to be intentional. So it's not the absence of something. Next, they added duotone color. This is what's called soft edge duotone because it gradates at the edge. Then they added more duotone color. Then they added more duotone color. Just keep pushing the, the lights and the darks within these local colors. And then they added duotone to the top. So you have dark red and light red instead of just red. And then they added the whites to the eyes and the light yellow and the dark yellow to the feet. And then, then they did the extra step, which is also optional, but really makes a difference in digital color, which is they replace all the black line art. They basically do a color hold on it, just like we colored our logos. And you fill it with a color, or in this case, a slight gradation. So you see black line art there, filled with a gradient there. Still digital coloring, still behind line, behind outline. It's just here the outline is co colored. Then adds what are called uh, special effect color holds, which go on top of the line art, right? So now we have in the eyes, blue and white that overtakes and goes above the line art to make new shapes, like twinkles and highlights. And then the finish, they add a few more of those, and you have a finished digitally colored illustration in duotone soft edge color with color held line art. So let's look at some analog examples. This is what you start with, right? These are just quick. This is flat color painted behind it, right? Where is it not flat color? Well, in the hair, I did a little bit of duotone. Just a little bit lighter on top than here. Now let's look at flat color behind more complicated inking. You can see that the flat color, actually there's not a lot of flat color, but you can also see the duotone, like the two greens and, and the two blues. So this is actually duotone behind more complex inking. These are all really old examples from comics classes. Here you have duotone made a little bit more clear. So this is what's going for what's called hard edge duotone, or in animation what's called cell shading, where you, you don't blend the shadows with the highlight, you actually just kind of separate them as a solid shape. And just another example, where you can see kind of a gradation, a soft edge duotone between the dark brown and light brown and a mixture of more line art, you know, more detail in the shading and less. So how do we do that digitally? We bring it into Photoshop. And I'm going to show you in your Canvas course. I want all of you to download this handout because it will help you. Not just with digital coloring, but later with our, when we do digital painting with assignment nine. So if you log in, in our Canvas course, if you go to links, you will see a few things that might be helpful. Now that we've been introduced to the blob brush and the pen tool, if you really want to practice and spend, invest some more time understanding Illustrator, here's a nice little handout about shortcuts and about what the tools do and how you make the settings. Of course, there's no uh, substitute for just practice. 
but this will give you stuff to react to. What I'd like all of you to do is to download this digital character coloring handout. If you just click on it, it will automatically download in Chrome. Now that's digital character coloring handout. You, we can also look at the digital coloring and painting handout because that shows how they are connected. All right, so the first one is specifically for this assignment. And it shows all these kind of steps, right? Sketch it in pencil, thumbnail different ideas, make a refined vector outline, that's where we are now. The next step is to fill behind the vector lines with flat local color. So if I want the helmet to look gray, I fill it in with a, a gray, right? But that doesn't mean that this part of the helmet needs to be the same gray as that part of the helmet. Then I might add what are called uh, cut edge highlights. So really sharp highlights are just added on top of the flat color. And then I might softly gradate the flat color into what's called soft edge duotone. So I have a light and a dark within each of these local flats. Then I can do a soft edge overlay of highlights and broaden them out a little bit more. Then I can do that with the shadows as well. So I'm just contrasting the duotone more and more. And then to finish it off, I simply color the, the outline. So now the outline around the, um, the helmet is more of a gradation. The outline around the bird is more of a sepia tone to contrast with the blue. And then I add a little, little sparkles on the helmet. These special effects, these color holds over the top of everything to finish it off, right? The other one, and these are PDFs, so you should be able to view them on any device. This is the digital coloring in here. So something a little bit easier than a character, just a lemon, right? Vector line work, color with flat local color. If you want to go further than that, I think the lemon needs that. You separate your flat local color into a highlight and a shadow. I like this example because notice how the highlight and the shadow, neither of them are as intense as what the local color is alone. So an easy way to, to do a tone of flat color is to simply add white to it and add black to it. You add white, you get the highlight, you add black, you get the shadow. Then you can soften that if you want soft edge. So this is a cell shaded lemon, right? But with the soft edge gradations, it feels a little bit more dimensional. So that has to do with the type of illustration you want to do. Then if you want to get fancier than that, you add full spectrum color to the shadow. So now it's not just lights and darks of the local color. It's got a little purple in there, a little green in there, some other stuff going on, a little orange in there. And then you can actually uh, change the outline to a color hold and paint basically on top of the outline. But it's still digital coloring because it is coloring that exists underneath a real or implied outline. Then to get it to show up on different backgrounds, like we did with our logo, we might add an offset. And then to make it ready for professional printing, or if we want to play with some retro printing, we're going to learn this by the time we do our posters, which is um, color separations and how you can control these in Photoshop. So instead of using the, the millions of colors you see on screen and limited to the inks of a, of a photo inkjet printer to mimic what we see on screen, we can actually limit our colors to just cyan, magenta, yellow, and black inks and really control that kind of vintage way of how it looks. All right. And those are all kind of the first steps for digital painting, except you don't need vector line work at all. So those are some resources for you. How do we actually set it up? Well, we're going to take our EPS file and we are not going to open it in Photoshop. Instead, we are going to open a new file in Photoshop and then drag our, our smart layer in, just like we did when we made our vectors, vector logos print ready, so that our vector, our EPS, stays as a smart layer. And then we will color behind it. Now, 
This is actually a, a very common entry-level job for digital artists. It's called flatting. 